Greetings everyone, Unknown Avenger here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about uh, the Mirror of the Night. Uh, it's it's going to be a small guide and uh, my personal opinions uh, on what to use and what I, I should suggest that you also use. And uh, you know, to help you out in your first runs and in your later uh, meta runs. So, when you're starting out, uh, Mirror of the Night will have locked all, all these and you're only going to be able to upgrade shadow presence, chthonic vitality, death defiance and greater reflex along with their alternative ones. So, first and foremost, you want to get your greater reflex upgraded to max, which is like just one one upgrade because that's how much you can uh, upgrade it and it gives you an additional dash. Dashing in Hades is a uh, crucial to to fighting bosses, to escaping death, to escaping damage from enemies and to being more effective overall uh, in your gameplay. So, Two dashes uh, makes wonders, uh, works wonders in your uh, in your builds, and uh, you'll you'll uh, you'll learn to, to use them uh, pretty quickly uh, instead of just having one. Uh, Ruthless Reflex doesn't give you an extra dash, but it gives you 50% damage and dodge chance for two seconds. This one is a little hard uh, to play with since you only have one dash, but if you manage to to avoid uh, just at the right time a hit you get 50% damage and dust chance um, so that means you will deal more damage for two seconds and you will be able to dodge half of the hits you have no you have a 50% chance that you'll avoid the next hits you're gonna dodge them that means no damage but having one dash is pretty tough uh, you cannot move freely uh, as you can when having greater reflex uh, you have less mobility and less mobility in Hades means death uh, that doesn't mean that it's a it's a bad one. It goes pretty well if you find Hermes, which gives extra booms uh, for dashes. He can give you like up to one, two, three uh, dashes. I think you can like have up to four dashes now with this one. I think yeah, I think he can offer you one dash, two dashes, or three dashes. Uh, yeah, that's pretty uh, that's pretty good. Uh, but it and it works better with Hermes boons uh, on. But you have you firstly have to find Hermes, and secondly, uh, Hermes himself has to offer you his dust uh, boons. If he doesn't, uh, you're kind of a little bit doomed, because later on you cannot uh, avoid a lot of attacks uh, effectively with one dash. It's not impossible, uh, but it's uh, super hard, and it makes uh, playing uh, way more, uh, way way harder than it, it's supposed to be. Uh, but the new aspect of the feast, the Gilgamesh. Uh, face the legendary uh, give gives you like by default two extra dashes upon you know building upon your default number of dashes so if you Let's have greater reflex you're gonna have like four dashes if you have ruthless reflex you're gonna have like three dashes and three dashes is is, is enough to avoid damage and also uh, make use of ruthless reflexes 50% damage and dodge chance so Gilgamesh face and ruthless reflex uh, work wonders uh, I suggest that you give it a go. Uh, overall, for your uh, for most of your rounds, I suggest Greater Reflex, uh, and you'll be uh, you'll be set to go. The second I'm going to talk is Death Defiance. Death Defiance plays a huge role in surviving later on and reaching to the end and progressing the story, since uh, health depletes pretty quickly in 80s, even in uh, in no hit levels and you know no extra difficulty settings. And uh, you know you need to upgrade at least once or twice, uh, which uh, which obviously are not a lot. Uh, the, th the third uh, the third rung needs a thousand uh, darkness, which is like the most you're gonna spend in death defiance to get the third rung. But you can pretty easily get like 50, and I think 500 is like the first two. You can co you can uh, collect those uh, that amount of darkness pretty quickly. Uh, so you'll be up. Uh, Maxing out Death Defiance next, or at least getting two charges. Stubborn Defiance is good, but it restores 30% of your health, and it also allows you to die once per chamber. So Death Defiance is like three per run, but one per chamber uh, is a little bit tough if you find yourself in a tough spot in a mini boss encounter or a boss encounter, and uh, your health reaches zero a second time. Then you're doomed and you gotta start all over again, which is, you know, it's how the game progresses and the story goes, but, you know, 
you wanna you want you want the long run you gotta get the death defines in my opinion stop defines if you if you feel comfortable and uh, you're uh, you you're, you feel like you're experienced an experienced gamer experienced status player um you've played a lot of time uh you're playing like i don't know a long time and stuff you can use tower defines of course uh that's why it's there but uh, i suggest death defines uh, most of the times it refills 50 percent of your health of your max health and uh, you can have up to three and you can also restore that uh by uh, buying kiss of six from the wall of karen and by talking to a uh, certain someone uh, you're gonna meet in the uh, fields of Elysium uh, that he can uh, refill your death defiances. Then we go to Chthonic Vitality. Starting, it gives you not a lot of health as it seems. It gives you just three. Three is kind of though pr a pretty good uh, per timber because it every time you like clear a room, you get three health. All right, so that that says a lot. It's a lot, and you can buff it up with uh, Dambler's Boon, which makes your healing more potent so you get four health you're gonna be like yeah but three is not a lot if you got like 50 or 100 uh, I'll tell you that you it, it's pretty good because you will learn to to not get hit as you play the game and that three health is gonna like stuck up three plus three plus three like in his chamber and you're gonna be uh, you're, you're gonna be healing in no time but starting off you want to farm if you're a beginner, uh, which is, uh, which is you know, since the ver version 1.0 lands, and there's a lot of beginners out there, Dark Regeneration is for you. It has two ranks, 30% and 60% you, you, if you level it up twice. And uh, you're going to be picking a lot of Darkness. Darkness is used for uh, various stuff, but mostly for uh, uh, for upgrading your Mirror of the Night uh, upgrades. So, to buff yourself up, you will need Darkness. Why not heal yourself? while in the process of collecting that darkness, right? 60% of the darkness is pretty good and pair it with dark, dark Thirst, which the weapons have a, a black uh, purplish glow uh, and, and they give like 20% extra darkness. Now that's a lot of healing and a lot of darkness to collect. Uh, so yeah, but this loses all of its effects in the fourth biome where you get, it's called the Temple of Sticks and you get no darkness as rewards either from the shop or from the chambers so it works up to the three biomes the first three biomes this one is more consistent all over i mean overall you know then we have shadow presence and fire presence shadow presence uh is my my personal favorite and i think it'll help a lot of, a lot of new players uh get the hang of it uh get the hang of the game more uh when striking foot from behind you do 50 percent more damage you start from 10% and it goes up to 50% and that that includes your attack and special damage only it's pretty good because when the the, the, the you know the going gets tough and uh, it's hard to pay attention to all the stuff that's happening around the, the fight in the battlefield you're fighting the, the chamber uh, you might have a lot of net a lot of enemies you might have like a lot of projectiles a lot of traps and stuff and you're just rushing hitting enemies uh, trying to survive and stuff you, you you'll get a lot of hits uh, that are like from behind like you, you'll get a lot of backstabs uh, believe me so this one it makes it potent um, and more useful but fire presence is a little bit more sophisticated so let's say you have a weapon that does a lot of damage or a build you're going for a build that does a lot of damage uh, straight out of the bat like the first strike that might be the legendary Arthur blade the Hestia aspect of the rail maybe the Rama bow and uh, you, you can pair it up with a, a big uh, attack boon like Artemis or uh, Demeter or Aphrodite or Athena and you have a pretty big um, attack straight at the bat because it gives your first strike on every enemy which means undamaged no not a, not a first strike it's actually uh, your first hit on undamaged enemies so imagine like having an enemy you got like all those buffs up you got like Artemis you got uh, your uh, Hestia rail uh, which makes uh, manually reloading uh, your first shot increased damage so plus 100% damage that's gonna be uh, a tough one to beat it's a tough uh, it's 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 a it's a pretty cool uh, upgrade but it's not as consistent as shadow presence uh, for all overall builds you know so this one is like more specific to some weapons in my opinion and this one is like more uh, for a little bit of everything 
So I use stat resins mostly, but I've used fire resins um, from time to time when I, I was going like for high damage builds uh, right at the bat, like Arthur Blade. Um, starting off, you're gonna use saddle presence more than you will be using fire presence. So uh, make sure you upgrade this one first. Then, to proceed more than those four upgrades, you're gonna have to spend five keys. Those five keys will unlock you the boiling blood, inferno soul, deep pockets, thick skin, and their alternatives. So I'll go first to the most important one: thick skin. It gives you five, uh, five health per rank. You can get up to 50 health per rank, uh, per uh, you know, uh, per maxing it out, and that means you have 100 health, like in the corner, low in the corner. Doesn't? Nope, it doesn't show. Never mind. Uh, you you have like base by default like. 50 health and you get 50 health um, from the skin meaning you get 100 health uh, more health means more uh, survival right uh, I don't think this needs a lot of explaining more health is always good and you should also uh, upgrade this one like after you unlock th those four with the five keys you should go for thick skin uh, straight off the bat to get more health and more survival in your uh, runs then you got a high confidence this might be a little bit more of a speedrun um, speedrun uh, kind of upgrade because it, you have to or even if, if it's not for speed run it's like for players that are super super confident in the skills as it implies you know the, the name of the upgrade and that the, that they can avoid all hits they can uh, they can pretty much uh, you know avoid uh, getting hit and getting damaged by traps by enemies by bosses and they they can keep their self and mana it at 80% or above you do if you do manage to have 80% health or above you get plus 25% damage which is a lot but uh, you're gonna have it if you if you're you know most players get hit every every now and then and it's normal it's just, you know it's a game uh, there's a lot going on and you know uh, it's hard to get 80% or above uh, in all chambers so it's gonna be like every few chambers I guess in my in my experience uh, so thick skin is a, is a way better option for uh, overall builds and stuff and uh, you get 100 health, which is uh, what most people want, right? Then we got Deep Pockets and Golden Dots. I used Golden Dots more, but Deep Pockets was my go-to when I started out. So you start out and you want to have uh, to collect some coins and some stuff, and you will reach the current shop in no time. Like, it's halfway there, halfway in Tartarus. Deep Pockets, you keep upgrading it, you get 100 coins uh, when you begin a run. 100 coins plus the small amount of coin you're gonna collect uh, till you reach uh, uh, Charon sub. You're gonna be able to buy a palm, you're gonna be able to buy a boon, a god boon. You're gonna be able to buff yourself straight off the bat and you get an early head start for uh, for your run. And believe me, it, it might even help you save the, what kind of run you're gonna do if you, if you have more coins straight off the bat. This one though, if you hoard your coins and you're not spending them a lot, because you know, you can kind of deal with the enemies and you're uh, hoarding that coin for, for later, for something uh, you might really need, say Death Defiance or I don't know, uh, a God Boon from another Karen shop. Uh, this gives you 15% if you max it out, starting 5% after its boss fight. So in between biomes, the chamber where you heal and you, you know, recollect yourself, you get 50% plus to your total, um, the total coins uh, you got on on you, uh, from the overall coins you're carrying at that certain moment. So this is up to you actually how you prefer your playstyle to be. Early head start or you know a, a bit of management to get a lot more coins later on. Uh, Infernal Soul and Staging Soul. So this is important because this is uh, this defines. Um, in my opinion, the the build you're going, if, if you're going to go for a cast build, um, it's uh, it's going to be Infernal Soul. Infernal Soul gives you plus two cast stones. So blood stones or cast stones, whatever you want to call them, uh, are, is an attack where you throw uh, a shard shaped uh, blood red uh, uh, crystal that can get stuck in enemies. So you start by default with one. And uh, this upon death is dropped on point of enemy death, or uh, if it if it doesn't hit, it just uh, travels a distance, and if it finds an obstacle, it just stays there. So you gotta pick them up and then use them again. 
it's pretty good because you have more cast stones if you're going for a cast build. Let's say you want a cast build with, uh, I don't know, uh, Dionysus Tippy Shot. Uh, that's pretty good because you're going to have three huge bursts of fog coming out of you. And you're going to get more by following um, Chaos Gates. Uh, Chaos can give you his... Uh, his choices and there's a lot of them that uh, in involve like getting an extra cast if you can withstand his whims and getting more casts upon Inferno Soul is crucial to your cast build so this one is for cast builds for sure in my opinion and you can, uh, you can even get Artemis' uh, legendary which gives extra cast plus two extra casts Staging Soul is more of um, support in my opinion since you can like use it for uh, when you're doing like a an attack build or a dash build or it's or you know a special build you can use it like to in between to do a little bit of damage uh, and it doesn't drop upon death whenever you you throw your cast it regenerates after five seconds and if you upgrade it you can reach it up to three seconds regeneration which is pretty quick uh, let me tell you so this one is more of a support cast uh, upgrade and this one is more of a, an attack and you know basically main uh, main damage dealer uh, cast upgrade. Bowling Blood and Abyssal Blood is up to your playstyle. Abyssal Blood is a defensive upgrade. For every stone you you you, you stick to an enemy, you get uh, five percent less damage and uh, five percent uh, less move speed for them. So you reduce their their damage and their speed. You upgrade it, you get 25%. Is that a lot? Yep, it is. It does a lot of it has a lot of wonders. It makes them slower. That makes them uh, deal to you less damage, and it's pretty good. It goes along well with it, either Infernal Soul or uh, Stitching Soul. Stitching Soul, you can you can stick a lot of uh, casts in enemies, but it's not just as consistent because you cannot deploy all of them at once. You have to have a little bit of waiting in between. You can uh, you can uh, you know you get the upgrade to, make, to have a less of uh, in between. Uh, waiting uh, broom casts from Hermes but you know cast builds are mostly better with infernal soul in my opinion then we have bowling blood bowling blood for every cast you throw starting from 10% uh, you get and getting up to 50% you get uh, extra damage from your special and attack dealing to enemies when you have like uh, multiple uh, not multiple you know starting from one to whatever So Bowling Blood. Bowling Blood gives you 10% up to 50% uh, based on your upgrade uh, rung. Uh, extra damage from your attack and special. So you stick your stone, your infernal stones in enemies and or your staging souls, whatever. I mean you cast stones generally and they do extra, you do extra damage to them. This is pretty good because this is more aggressive, this is more defensive. So you can pick your style. I usually go with Bowling Blood in my opinion. I'm more of an aggressive player, I've been playing for a long time, and I prefer it overall. But Abyssal Blood is a, is pretty good for... It, it helps you get less damage from bosses as well and makes them slower. Then you need 10 keys to unlock Privileged Status and on Libyan Favor. Privileged Status is a personal favorite of mine from Mirror. You get 40% extra damage versus cursed... Uh, versus double cursed enemies. So. If you manage to get two curses on an enemy, and curses are like status effects you can get from the Olympian gods only, chaos is not included, that's what I mean. Uh, so let's say you have like Aphrodite's attack and Demeter special, so you inflict uh, weak with uh, Aphrodite and chill with, spe with, uh, with special on Demeter, and uh, you, get, you get that little icon above the enemy and you do 50% more damage to that guy. So you can inflict uh, curses with multiple uh, multiple um, uh, ways. You can like use your cast some some gods, uh, some others you can even use your dash, you know. And uh, some curses you gotta acquire them like at a later time. So let's say you have Zeus, you don't get right away his uh, status curse. You get like his lightning bolts, like thunder flourish. But then you have to find Zeus again and get his jolted status effect. Uh, nonetheless, though, this is a pretty powerful because you do 40% overall damage to the enemy if you get two status curses going on, and that's a lot of extra damage, especially against bosses. 
Family favorite is for players that uh, try to get as many gods as they can. And it's 5% per god boon you find. I mean per god actually, not per god boon, because that would be crazy. It's like more per god boon, per, per god. So let's say you have Artemis, Zeus, Athena, Demeter, and Aphrodite. There's like 5 gods, right? So you get 25% uh, extra damage. Mostly, I don't think you'll find more than 5 or 6 gods, so you can like... I, I think it tops off, even if it looks like it can, it can go like it definitely go higher. I think it tops it off on like 30% uh, in my opinion. So, you know, and also it's pretty good for uh, when you're not going for cast builds, for, for uh, not for cast builds, for curse builds. You don't you don't like plan on getting any, any passive curse. Let's say you just want uh, Zeus's lightning, you don't want his jolted, right? This is uh, doing a, a good overall damage to your old stats. Uh, so yeah, this is more of a raw damage build. This is a little bit of curse, but this is this I think prevalent status is more versatile because you can still do damage raw damage uh, even with some curses. But family favorite is uh, for those special ones that just go for uh, full full damage, don't care about curses, just go and get as many gods as they can. Olivian favor and dark foresight. So Olivian favor uh, early on is pretty uh, helpful because you're you're going to start by getting off uh, plain boons like. Um, normal looking ones and rare is like high rarity which means uh, uh, you start off from a higher damage uh, value and you just scale even more and this one makes your chances of getting higher rarity I mean at least rare uh, boons from gods up to 40% and this is a lot so starting out you're gonna need to get this uh, as high as you can to get better boons and making you stronger um, further dark foresight though when you when you gather a lot of darkness and you know you you have farmed your way around the mirror of the night uh, is more potent for better builds so you max it out it starts for two percent and goes up to twenty percent and you have a lot more chances to find god boons hammers coins and palms palms are like palms of power that let you level up your god boons a level get more power and uh, become stronger overall so I think dark foresight is pretty good because more god boons and hammers means more ways to buff your your build and your you know your damage and your overall power uh, but this is way better later on because it you'll get way less darkness and gemstones than you would get if you had Olympian favor which only increases your uh, chance to get rare boons so you gotta farm that that darkness first, and then you can go dark foresight. Dark foresight gonna help you build stronger builds. God's pride makes your cha makes your chances uh, to get a, a boon of epic rarity higher. So you can uh, level it up up to twenty percent, starting from one percent. Uh, epic boons are like the best thing that you can find straight off from a god. There's a higher rarity is heroic, but you only get it from exchange boons. You cannot like get it from uh, you, God cannot just offer it to you straight off the bat so you kind of have to have like Athena on attack and then you get Zeus and Zeus will you will be like you want to exchange that attack uh, of the Athena gave you with my heroic way more powerful um, uh, attack and that's how you get heroic but that depends on your build as well so I, I was just giving an, exa an example it's not like when you, you see heroic you should always get it you know uh, but God's Bride is a is a pretty uh, dope uh, upgrade that I love having on because uh, I have dark foresight most of the time and God's pride is a good way for me to balance out uh, the plain boons I don't want the boons all the boons you know to be uh, normal ones uh, high uh, low low level boons and stuff I kind of want some of them to be epic and I try to get epic on my um, the boons I'm gonna use more so more active like whatever I'm gonna deal damage with and then you get God's legacy so it's God if you take a, uh, a considerable amount of his boons, he's gonna offer you his legendary. Legendaries are like boons that, you know, give a, maybe a passive effect, or maybe have a more active effect, like more lightning from Zeus, or, you know, uh, Poseidon gives you one that his knockaway effects hit twice automatically. Uh, so, you have 10% more to get the legendaries and duos. So, duos is like, let's say you have uh, Poseidon and Zeus. So, Poseidon and Zeus have a cool uh, duo boon, 
which is called Sea Storm. Let's say you get uh, Founder Flores on your uh, on your special, and you get uh, Tempest Flores, which is the attack of Poseidon on your attack. Sea Storm is going to enable you if you have at least one of the following for each of the gods. It's going to enable you to both of those gods to offer you Sea Storm. So let's say you have Tempest Strike and Thunder Flores. You are in for enabling um, Sea Storm. Sea Storm is going to be enabled uh, by getting another boon uh, by, by by hunting uh, actively uh, Poseidon and Zeus specifically, and uh, they will like team up and give you like that Sea Storm boon. Uh, this this God's legacy uh, is like the best way to get more duo boons if you're like actively hunting for a lot of them, and you can get them early on without getting a lot of extra boons because they, they won't always like offer it offer it you straight at the bat so let's say you, you get like tempest flourish and thunder flourish they're not it's not like necessary that the next uh, Bo uh, poseidon or zeus boon is going to be like um their sea storm the, their do boon do boons can, can be offered by both of the gods that um that uh team up it's not just like from the main one so this increases your chances for legendaries and duos um, I'm not sure I, I really I mean it's pretty good 10% is a lot you can get a, a, a lot earlier your uh, legendaries and duos but I prefer God Sprite since I go with Dark Foresight since I get a lot more boons I'm bound to get down the road uh, my legendary or duo and then we go to the safe sifting of the run Faded Authority and Faded Persuasion Faded Authority lets you alter the rewards of the chambers that means if there's darkness in the next chamber you're gonna go, you can alter it and maybe make it like be a coin, make it be a boon, a boon from a god, maybe be a bomb of power. But it alters it randomly. I suggest that if you if you get faded authority and you wanna roll, roll the dice to alter the wards. You alter it. At, uh, I mean, you alter it up to three times. No. Up to three, two to three try, to three times actually. You max it out at uh, at eight rolls, but after a certain point, like after two rolls or three, you're gonna start to see a pattern that the, it's gonna be offering you the same stuff. So that means if you if you continue doing that, you're just gonna be wasting your faded authorities. There's you know, there's like a certain uh, a certain amount of offers it's gonna alternatively offer you. So remember, do not spend a lot of that on a single chamber door. Like up to two, I think it's the best. Two, two rerolls. Faded Persuasion is my personal favorite as well, uh, since it got um, introduced. Uh, because whenever you're offered something from the Well of Karen, let's say it, it doesn't offer me a healing, uh, as a life essence, which is healing yourself, or a kiss of sticks, because I might be missing a death defiance, I can reroll and get and get new items. The problem with this one is every time you reroll uh, on the same well or on the same god, uh, the same encounter, it makes your it makes the price go up. So the first reroll is like one dice, but the second reroll is th is two, and the third is three, and it goes on. So I don't I don't recommend like rerolling for uh, boons or items more than once. If you have more more to spare you can like roll twice but that's it uh, after that you, you ain't gonna be able as well but even if you are uh, I don't recommend it since uh, you're, you're not gonna be like offered a lot of stuff and I don't think it's worth the reroll uh, price Faded Persuasion and Faded Authority can help you save your runs this one gives you more chances to find stuff you want and this one makes you even if you if you like have, uh, have a god as well forgot to mention that uh, and he doesn't offer you like what you what do you wish for? Let's say you have Demeter and she offers you like her uh, Her coal her das and her cast, but you want her special You can reroll and you might be able to get it her special even on higher rarity or lower you don't know But it's still a good one to get to get the boons you want and Save the specific build you you, you wish for this is more like to get the gods you want more And this one is like the more more like for boons specifically not for gods. You can get more, uh, more rerolls in a single run, 
by getting first the upgrade from the house contractor to the right of the uh, to the right of Hades in the main chamber in the Great Hall. Uh, you can like find it there. It costs some gems, and it makes a Rickathonic key, which looks like this little dude over there that has the number one down. Uh, a Rickathonic key you pick up in your run will give you an, a, a reroll, a free reroll as a, as a gift. So you can like go hunting for kiss and get more faded persuasions and faded authority. So this is like my take on the guide. Uh, I'm sorry if this is a little bit confusing. You can ask me more stuff. I'm still new to that, to the, the, the whole guide thing. I'm just trying my best. But, you know, I'm gonna now uh, uh, change to whatever I use on my runs to give you a little bit of a taste of how I go about him lately. And uh, you can tell me your opinions below. So, I'm, I'm usually going with Shadow Presence, Dark Regeneration, Death Defiance, Creator's Reflex, Boiling Blood, Infernal Soul, Golden Touch, Thick skin, privileged status, dark foresight, God's pride, and faded persuasion. So, that is all for me. Uh, I hope it helped you out. Uh, if you like, want some more guides uh, for me, I don't know. There's a lot of good guides out there. I'm just trying to give my my personal opinion and my personal touch on it. Uh, I will uh, try to to make more for more stuff in Hades, uh, more guides. But uh, that's it for now. I uh, hope I hope you had fun. I uh, hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. So see you around.